there is far more to Isolith than what we've covered on this channel. Go back. Forbidden be these parts. The realm of the creatures of chaos. They accept their banished fate. This isn't just a place that was twisted by the birth of chaos. This is a place that embraced it and birthed a unique culture in the process. Within its walls is a tortured family, yes, but one that is far more whole than we ever gave them credit for. A civilization that went to war with the wider world, one that may have even made a pact, a truce, with their enemies. Those who defy the pact, those who trespass Quelag's domain, may you feel the depth of our wrath. There is so much left to discover, and not just in the cut content, but in the translations of these games. This video is actually almost entirely based upon the theories of Hawkshaw, who is another YouTuber who is one of the first to portray demons in a far more civilized and cultured light. It also features heavily the translations of Loki, a talented writer who has contributed some of his own theories on top of Hawkshaw's. We start, of course, with Isolith. The Witch of Isolith, one of the four lords who found an ineffable soul from the first flame, is actually just named Isolith. In the Japanese text, there is a point where Quelana simply refers to her as Mother Isolith, and the developers often use terms like Isolith's children when talking about the witch in interviews. The city was still named after her, but as those who knew the witch as simply Isolith dwindled, so too did use of her name. Now, this second point I'm going to make pretty much forms the entire foundation for this video. This is our claim. It was Isolith's ambition, not her desperation, which led to the creation of the Chaos Flame. It's a very commonly held assumption that the Witch of Isolith attempted to duplicate the first flame in an effort to replace it. And while it is a fact that she did duplicate the first flame, it's incorrect for us to assume that she did this to replace the fading first flame. In truth, the Japanese only really claims that the witch attempted to create the fire, not replace it, and it's far more likely that the witch, in fact, simply wanted a fire of beginning for herself. In addition, whenever sources talk about this recreation of the first flame, they don't mention Isolith's devotion to Gwyn's Age of Fire, they don't mention her having this fear of a fading flame, they reference her ambition. And as we'll explore, it makes way more sense for the Chaos Flame to be a failed product of Isolith's ambition early in the Age of Fire, rather than this late product of desperation when the Age of Fire was fading. More proof of her ambitions may well be surrounding the ruins of Lost Isolith. I'm talking about the lower halves of dragons. The Japanese name is That Which Fails to Become, which is a parallel to all the other serpentine creatures that failed to become dragons. And it's more evidence that Isolith attempted to recreate an ancient dragon, which is something that many other characters in the series ended up trying to do, and it's pretty much a hallmark of the most ambitious characters of the series. When Isolith's ambitions did push her to create a first flame, she eventually lost control of it and became the Bed of Chaos. In Quilana's Japanese dialogue, Instead of saying that they turned into deformed creatures, she actually says that her mother and sisters were transformed into a seedbed of grotesque life. This, of course, leaves very little doubt that the Bed of Chaos is fused with Isolith and at least two of her daughters. And not only are these two daughters fused with the mother, it's also likely that they helped to bring Chaos under control. At its core, Chaos is parasitic. Its creatures are commonly this merging of two beings, but that's not to say that Chaos has complete control over its host. In fact, the Bed of Chaos may well be an example of this. First, let's establish that each side of the Bed of Chaos is a daughter of Chaos, and then we'll establish that they are helping to control Chaos. When we breach each side, notice how we walk through this mass of bright orange runes. These are runes that are shared with the other children of Chaos, such as Quelag and Ceaseless. 
Extending upwards from here are these long, straight staffs, which are very much like the Isolith staffs that are wielded by the Daughters of Chaos in the opening cutscene, and two staffs in particular are held by each of the Daughters on either side of the Witch here. After we sever a link, the Avatar of Chaos breaks free, and it lords over this feminine mother figure who has been feebly swatting us away this whole time. So if the Avatar of Chaos can break free of its bonds, then it logically follows that Isolith and her two daughters brought Chaos under control in the first place. And Miyazaki says as much in his Design Works interview, when he says that Ceaseless Discharge was born when the Chaos Flame was still not stable. And again, what logically follows is that the Chaos Flame did stabilize at some point. All of this, it really helps us immensely when we're trying to set up a timeline, because it suggests that there are stages to the chaos that erupted in Isolith. There was the cataclysmic creation of the Chaos Flame, and then there was a period afterwards where the flame became somewhat stable. Ceaseless is our proof. He's a demon that was created closer to chaos than anyone, and it's clear that he is far more afflicted as a result. Our next claim that follows is that the first demons that came after Ceaseless were born of a more stable flame, and that this allowed for these creatures to be a little bit more sentient. Let's talk about fire sorceries, pyromancy, and the demons associated with it. With the birth of Chaos came Chaos Pyromancy, and then there was Pyromancy after that. But before that, there were fire arts, which were sorceries, and there were also the sorcerers that mastered them. In the English text, the demon Fire Sage is said to be, at once, the last master of the original fire arts, and also the first demon. However, this can't quite be true, can it? Uh, we just established that Ceaseless was born while the Chaos Flame was still unstable, so how could the game be stating that this sage is also the first demon? Consider instead the Japanese text. Japanese is often really vague when it's talking about whether something is singular or plural, and we have run into this problem before. So instead, the description could be read as, the fire priests of demons were among the first demons and among the last users of fire sorceries. And the demon Fire Sage himself is actually more accurately a fire priest of demons, which is a far more fitting name for not just this demon, but this type of demon. And for there to be fire sages or fire priests at all, it's a way more convincing argument for this rich culture that Isolith developed after the mother forced some control over chaos. After all, pyromancy is one of the most important things that Isolith brought to the world, and it only happened as a result of the Chaos Flame. Dark Souls 3's Isolith staff states that with the birth of the Chaos Flame, the Flame Witches were, at once, both sorcerers and shamans. They weren't obliterated by chaos, they were just changed by it and their fire arts appear to have acquired this element of faith, which may well be related to these demonic fire priests, and which may well have later become pyromancy. So continuing on from pyromancy, the English text claims that Kualana is the mother of pyromancy, and that Isolith is the godmother of pyromancy. But the Japanese text actually uses the same term for both these women, calling them founders or pioneers of pyromancy. The word founder is also used for Seath, who is the founder of sorcery. The Isolith pyromancy tome goes on to state that chaos pyromancies led to all later forms, so surely the daughters of chaos were all intrinsic to the development of this pyromancy. Possibly. Dark Souls 3 does support this. The white hair talisman says that the witches of chaos were founders of pyromancy. So for Kualana to be so versed in pyromancy, did she really escape immediately after her mother and sisters were turned into the bed of chaos? Because that's the way she always made it sound. Kualana talks a lot about the anguish of her family, how she escaped, and how they need to be freed from chaos. But all other evidence suggests that she at least helped them struggle with the initial outburst of chaos, and I don't think it's possible she just sees them as mere monsters. Kualana's robes are actually dressed upon a corpse, which is upon an altar in front of her brother Ceaseless Discharge, which suggests that she faked her death to escape, because why else would this corpse be upon an altar? 
and why would you fake your death to creatures that you think are just base monsters? The answer is that she can't have left immediately, because Ceaseless cares about his sister, as his rage clearly shows, because when you desecrate her corpse and steal the robes off of it, that's when he attacks. No, it's very likely that these two had a connection, built after the chaos engulfed Isoleth. After all, it was his elder sisters, plural, who had sympathy for him and attempted to ease his pain with an orange charred ring. There is room for a really, really tragic story about Quelana and the legacy that she left behind, but this isn't the video for it, so remember to subscribe if you want to see it someday. So as you should be able to tell from this point, that there is a far stronger argument for an organized, intelligent demon culture than there is against it. I'm gonna rattle off a bit more evidence though. First, becoming a demon may have been something of an optional process, the exception being Isolith and Ceaseless, all of whom were brought into being when the Chaos Flame was still unstable. So consider Quelag and the Fair Lady, who are not described as among the first demons, like Ceaseless is. Quelag strokes her abdomen affectionately in the cutscene, showing no resentment for what she's become. The fair lady apologizes to her sister for the death of her eggs, displaying this desire for demon kind to grow. The egg vermifuge states that egg bearers chose to serve the flame of chaos. Chaos servants can even access a secret path that makes travel more convenient, and many demons sacrifice humanity in order to serve chaos. Not just the humanity of others, of course, like Quelag does, but many of these creatures might have been humans beforehand. The Capra and Taurus demons actually drop humanity, and the Capra demon has the intelligence to train the beasts that serve it. Miyazaki has even gone on record praising the Capra demon's design, saying that this goat head has this sense of ceremony and long-held tradition. There is even a hierarchy among demons, almost a monarchy. Lesser demons, greater demons, fire priests, princes, a king, and you might even want to call Isolith a queen. There is a language, a script, there are ancient smithing techniques as shown by the Chaos Flame Ember, and also Gwailana, who is a daughter of Chaos who is closer to the bed of Chaos than anyone, and yet she shows no signs of transformation. After the initial engulfment, transformation may well have been less about proximity and more about choice. Demons are not simple monsters, in anguish as Quelana would have us believe. And were it not for the war that Gwyn waged upon them, perhaps demon kind would have a far better foothold on the world than when we encounter them. This war against the demons is referenced in the Black Knight weapons, which were forged to counter the tremendous size of their demonic adversaries. And it's clear that Isolith was on the losing side of this war, considering that the Japanese text refers to the city as the obsolete capital of chaos. All this said though, demon kind wasn't completely obliterated. The capital is, again, only referenced as obsolete, it's no longer a threat to humanity or Gwyn's Age of Fire. It's just this broken civilization that's devoid of humans and quietly incubating its next generation through the egg bearers. Therefore, words from Quelag's cut dialogue about the demons seems likely to remain true. Quelag also speaks of a pact. Those who defy the pact, those who trespass Quelag's domain, may you feel the depth of our wrath. The gods bowed out of the war with the demons in a really dominant position, that's for sure. They were even able to swell their own ranks with demon kind, placing them in key positions. The lesser batwing demons, for example, wield lightning and ferry key messengers around the kingdom of the gods, and the fiercest demons were just left to fulfill their nature, guarding and executing unwanted undead. From those kept in the asylum of Dark Souls 1, to those trapped in the undead settlement of Dark Souls 3. It's also quite likely that when Gwyn bowed out of the war against the demons, it might have been because he had a more pressing concern than a drawn out war. There was the rise of another culture that is far more chaotic than even demons were. The Abyss. 
If this video is received well, then there is room for a video on them as well. For now, I'm going to direct you to Hawkshaw's video on demons, which offers quite a few more unique theories than have been presented here. But anyway, I'm really glad for the opportunity to get everyone up to speed on this channel about how demons are more of a cultured force. So thank you for watching. Finally, let's talk one last time about Discord. About a week ago, we had this huge PvP tournament where thousands of you guys competed in the arena for prizes and attempted to kill me. In the end, only three people got the best of me and I managed to kill 16 people, so it's a pretty good win-loss ratio. Our Discord channel was crazy active and it pretty much has been for the last few weeks. So please come and join our community. Be a part of the growth of not only our channel, but the best voice chat program on the market. Also, there might be a few impromptu PvP tournaments coming up, which you can only get in on if you join. Also, for patrons, I'm going to do one for you guys as well that's just open to our private Discord. So, thanks again for watching this video, guys. Go and check out Hawkshaw, go and check out Discord, and I'll see you next time.